Hey guys, Keith here from Injective Rehab. Uh, today's video, we're going to be going over piezoelectric injectors. Uh, these come out of like the BMW, the N54s, the N63, the N74 motors. Um, I believe that's it. But the, uh, the requests we get all the time, we get emails asking about these injectors, if we can do them, and what pressures we test at. Um, yes, we are able to do these. Uh, and no, we don't use just a standard port injection machine like most other places do. Um, people often question the cost of doing that. Uh, it's because there's a lot that goes into you know, t testing and cleaning one of these injectors. Um, today's video is kind of going to go over the process of how that's done. Um, and this video is going to show you a little bit more about you know, why you need specialized equipment to get this done. Um, places that are charging 25 bucks per injector or whatever they call it, they, they really can't tell you that the injector is good. They can clean it externally like you can at home. They're running at like 10 bar of pressure max, sometimes five bar, but you know, these in the test plans from Siemens VDO, you know, one of the test plans in there is at 205 bar pressure. That's almost 3000 PSI, not 145 PSI if they're running 10 bar on a, uh, you know, port injection machine. Um, you know, the, the measurements that they need to be done, it's not cc's per minute like you would see in port injection um you know these are it's we're talking about cubic millimeters um per stroke which it's basically a quarter you know a, you know, a quarter of a, of a millisecond um is you know is what a microsecond is that needs to be tested and achieved on the machine so it's something you can't even see if it is actually good with your own eye um you know the equipment has to test that for you so because of that it's a pretty boring process to watch which is why we don't have a lot of those videos out there um, you know another thing that someone that has a port injection machine that has maybe bought in a driver adapter box to be able to you know energize the injector that's fine and dandy they can actually spray it and show you a spray pattern which looks cool but it doesn't really do much else other than tell you that yeah the injector is leaking or it's not leaking and not leaking at 10 bar pressure is pretty easy to do when it's running, you know, test plans up to 250 bar pressure. It's a lot different. You, know, you can you can imagine if you were to go get a hose or something like that, it's going to burst at, at some point in time because it needs to be able to hold that higher pressure. So in order to test and check that the injector is actually good, you can't say it's good because you tested it at 10 bar pressure. That's just complete garbage that people even you know, try to say that that's how they can test them. Um, another thing that we're able to do that you can't do with other driver boxes is regenerating the piezo stack inside of the injector. The piezo stack is similar to your phone. When you get a new phone, the battery lasts, you know, say two days, uh, you know, when you, when you first get it. A year later, you're charging the phone three times a day to get a full charge. Well, the injector works the, the piezo stack basically works in that same manner because of driving habits that you have the injector kind of forgets that it can do more than what it's used to doing so we are clearing out its memory so to speak and creating the regenerating the piezo stack to remember what its actual operation range you know is so that it's going to perform like a, a new injector again um, you know like we should say on our uh, on our website Anything under index 11 is not really worth sending in. It does not respond well to cleaning. They made revisions after that because they were pretty much junk. So I would recommend not sending them in for that. Sometimes it can help them. It is a way to have a you know an inexpensive alternative to you know buying new index 12 injectors, but more than likely it's not going to fix your issue. So. Um, again, today's video, I'm going to go over some of the different points you can see, you know, what, what the injector goes through as far as a test plan and how much time goes into each one of these injectors. Um, you know, just the test plans alone, not even factoring in cleaning or having to re-clean because it has not passed, um, you know, passed the test. You're looking at at least over an hour and a half per, you know, per injector. 
So some of these injectors will have three, four hours into just one injector. It's not as simple as getting a rag, cleaning it off, and you know, you see people on online showing you, you can clean the tips of these off. Yeah, it, that's part of it, but there's a lot more that goes into, uh, you know, into that. So uh, we'll get into the video here and hopefully it helps explain a little bit more about that process for you. Before we can start flowing the injector, we need to mount it into the test bench. There's a sensor that goes on to the bottom. This sensor inside is what reads the output of the injector so that we can get all of the readings back to the machine. Piezoelectric injectors do have a polarity, so we'll connect the electronics and then we will connect the pressure feed tube to the top of the injector. Again, this is running at 200 plus bar of pressure, so it needs to be tightened on to make sure that it is not spraying out. Once it is mounted, we close a protective lid. We're provided with test plans from every injector manufacturer so we can just start typing in the part number of the injector and it will populate. At this point, we'll be able to pull up the test plan that the manufacturer wants us to test against. There's a lot of other information that we put in. A client's name, order number, so we can reference it back later on. All this information will show up on the reports. The reports are for individual injectors, so we'll even indicate which injector this report would be for. To ensure safety, we run a leak test. On the left, we'll select which test plans we're running this time and start the tests up. So this is the part of testing that gets really boring, so we're going to fast forward through it here. But as you can see in the top right, it's about 16 minutes just for this one test plan. And there's seven different tests that we're running. The oscilloscope is the only thing that you're able to actually see during the test. Sensors pick up all the other information needed. About an hour later, all the test plans have been completed. They're all blue, which means they're perfect. And now we create the report. And I'll spend a little time going over how the report works and what the numbers actually mean. After you get your baseline reading, which don't normally come out perfect like that, that video happened to be of an after uh, cleaning test that was performed. But the injectors go through an ultrasonic bath for about a half hour or so. Back flushing an injector is a very important step. Uh, this is where the injector is flowed in reverse of how it normally operates. After the ultrasonic bath, anything that was broken up internally inside of there needs to exit. The exit on the inlet side of the injector is larger than the outlet side, so you need to flow all the debris out of the injector, and this is done by connecting the input hose to the injector that normally is run through the bottom of the injector and the fluid flows up through the injector and out the exit. Once back flushing is done, that whole testing process starts all over again. Regenerating the piezo stacks is another process that you can't see anything going on, but it's happening in the background. You can see the results in the tests. As you can see from this video so far, testing these piezoelectric injectors is not a quick process. In addition to the time that's put into these, there's a lot of specialized equipment that is required. In the two decades we've been doing this, we tend to worry about results, not so much videos 
to be posted on Instagram and social media. Once the decouplers have been replaced and the combustion seals, everything's individually bagged and boxed up, ready to ship back to the customer. Even the old used stuff is returned. When a customer gets their report, it will have a summary sheet of all the individual reports that the machine spits out for them. It has part number, the index, and a little note on there reminding you that you can get a report of each individual injector. The before service, it's listed all the different test plans, what the parameters are, and then each injector is listed in a column showing the different status of it failed pass or perfect the after service section works the same way as the before it's giving you the parameters again each individual injector and the results uh, there's notes to where the piezo stack's been regenerated and then there will also be a notes section at the bottom if there's anything in particular to note for the customer the individual injector reports have all the same information we put into the machine earlier. Customer's name, order number, which injector it is. And then each one of the plans shows the actual range that makes an injector be either green, red, or blue. Uh, the tighter range here is what makes this injector perfect. Uh, the pages, there's three pages for these reports. So when you're doing six injectors before and after, multiple cleanings, you know, it becomes quite extensive to have to print all these out. That's why we offer them digitally. We take the pertinent information and put it on the summary report for you. All right, guys, so hopefully that explains a little bit about the process for uh, cleaning and flow testing the piezoelectric injectors. Um, there's a uh, subscribe button down below you can hit that subscribe button turn the notifications on for future videos that we put out and uh hopefully that explains a little bit more about the uh the cleaning process here at injector rehab for the piezo electric injectors for your uh, n54 n63 n74 motors and uh we'll see you guys all next time thanks for watching